Well, 2014 was the year that Union AMCU consolidated its strength and flexed its muscles. It led the strike in the platinum sector and extended its influence in the gold sector as well. The labor ructions this year also exposed the weakness of previously dominant labor unions under the banner of Kasatu and a growing split within the Labor Union Federation itself. Tension between Kasatu and uh, the main member, NUMSA, came to a head in November when the latter was expelled from the Trade Union Federation. NUMSA and Kasatu had been at loggerheads since the suspension of General Secretary Zwelenzi Mavavi over an office affair. NUMSA had also withdrawn its support for the ANC before the general elections. It's now expected that NUMSA could form a rival political party and contest the local government elections as early as 2016. We're joined once again by Ian Crookshanks from the South African Institute of Race Relations. And Ian, so, so since all the strike action, Anglo talking about 60,000 jobs being lost, yes. Amplats are talking about selling off some of its, its mines, and, and they're playing a, a game sometimes, it seems, saying this isn't linked to the strikes, but we do have to mechanize uh, pretty quickly. Do you think we'll look back on, on 2014 and, and say this was a year that the mining sector started bleeding jobs? I think that's quite correct. And uh, it's been a decade since we've had anything like this. And you know, it's not just the direct mining sector. It's all those company who have companies who provide goods and services to the mines themselves. So there's a far bigger outreach there of, uh, of organizations and firms and individuals who are going to find themselves without customers, without jobs. It's going to have a very serious ramification and it will ripple through to all sectors of the economy. It's also uh deepened a sense of mistrust or, or can we at least say that there are moves now the deputy president uh, leading a, a forum uh, could this be the spark that that brings the sides together and says we have to work this out in the name of, of South Africa because it is crippling us uh, well I think it's very difficult in the name of the country to get people to, to move away from these entrenched positions there's been there's been so much bitterness built up there's been so much uh, feeling of being let down you know when you find the chief executive of, of uh, one of the mining companies being paid 20 million a year and these chaps are, are uh, the, the miners themselves are stri striking for a fraction of that maybe 10,000 or 12,000 a year to a, a, a month it's nothing like th there's something wrong with the balance and this is going to be the year when that came to a head and we've got to see some sort of rationalizations workers will have to be paid more they will have to do more to earn more and that is where the mechanization should make a difference because you need to uh, link wages to, to, to productivity. productivity yes. uh, I, I saw today, uh, I think this was a global story, another CEO giving his bonus back, and you're talking about this yes. huge wage difference. Well, will that become a trend next year, do you think? <laughs> when well, CEOs for, uh, themselves have to stand up and, and say, let's yes. look at it. Is it voluntarily, or is it uh, being pushed, uh, you know, jumped or pushed, which one of these is it? Uh, or good PR. <laughs> Perhaps that. I think it's also a question of they must be seen to have earned this. Now, with the strikes, where are the company profits going to come? If there haven't been significant company profits, why did the CEOs earn multi-million bonuses? That doesn't seem right. I think that should be taken into account. All right, a big trend this year. We'll yes. come back to you, right. Ian, shortly. Let's move to some of the other economic headlines. 